Okay, seeing none, we will move into GA 04-18. Yes, and this is the second reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only, an ordinance of the city of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending chapter 15, offenses and miscellaneous of the Punta Gorda Code, amending reserved section 15-8, establishing security measure requirements for owners and operators of retail gas pumps, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Changes? Motions? I was yeah. gonna just make a motion. Uh, move approval of GA-04-18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve GA-04-18. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next, we have GA-05-18. Yes, and this is the second reading of an ordinance, which I'll, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Punta Gorda Code Chapter 10, Yard Waste, Solid Waste and Recycling, Article Roman Numeral 2, Solid Waste, Amending Section 10-11, increasing the monthly fee for removal and disposal of <coughs> curbside recycling services, providing for conflict and severability, and providing an effective date. Motions, changes? Uh, move approval of GA-05-18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve GA-05-18. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next, we have the consent agenda. Would any council members like to pull anything on the consent agenda? Oh, just a, one point on one of the items. On It's not necessarily, needs. I don't think it needs to be pulled. I just want to make a comment. Um, uh, regarding uh, item D, D number one, the letter of support for the Nature Conservancy project, um, I, I like the idea of the project. I just want to make sure that um, we've had discussions along the way that we want to make sure that the mangroves are not allowed to grow above the seawall so that there's visibility from the land side. And <clears throat> I don't know if there's any way we can incorporate that into the letter of support, but I would like to see that mentioned. Probably need to pull that from the consent agenda because so you have opportunity for input. Okay. okay. Then I'd like to pull that item, please. All right, so D1 has been pulled. Anybody else? I don't have anything to pull other than I would like to just comment on D3 and um, thank the Punta Gorda Historic Mural Society for outstanding fundraising and all of their continued um, hard work in this community. Absolutely. And good luck getting through DOT. Uh, I move approval of the consent agenda. Wait, we need citizens' comments. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Citizens' okay. comments on any, you want to say something? On consent agenda items? <laughs> Kelly Gaylord, Punta Gorda Historic Mural Society. We're real excited about the Harbor Walk mural, and I've been working with Howard, and it looks like we'll hopefully have a November start, so weather permitting. <coughs> so, thank thank you. you. And thank you for all the support from the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on the consent agenda? <coughs> Okay, we will entertain a motion to approve without D1. Motion to approve. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda without D1, which will be standing on its own. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. D1. For the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design. That item has been discussed numerous times with the, all the partners and with the agencies. It will be required as part of the permit. Okay. We will not be signing anything if it's not included in the permit, understanding the need to keep it low. <coughs> Thank you. Then I, uh, I move approval of item D1. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve D1. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. That takes care of the consent agenda. Does you want to break now or you want to wait a little bit? We'll keep going? Okay. We'll move into the regular agenda. So now would be the time for citizens' comments on regular agenda items, which includes the award to the actuary of Foster and Foster, the master agreement for the Bethel St. Mark uh, infrastructure analysis, the award to, who's that going to? Johnson Engineering uh, for the Jones Loop Force Main, then the award for the construction for the Gianetti Contracting Corporation for the Jones Loop Force Main, the comments from the fiscal year 2019 strategic plan, the RO water treatment plant project update, the Ponce de Leon Park redesign services. Then we, under new business, we have requests to uh, use the parking spaces by the Justice Center, and then we have discussion of the use of the Punta Gorda Library facility. 
Now would be the time to comment on any one of those items. You can take either podium, uh, state your name, you have three minutes on regular agenda items. This will be a change for me at this, uh, at this podium. I'm quite, uh, um, this is in reference state to State your the, name, please. I'm sorry, Gary Skellicorn, Punta Gorda City resident. This is in reference to the um, use of the old uh, library. About three years ago, I approached council member Prathke with a question and an idea. What will happen to the old library? Wouldn't the citizens of Punta Gorda benefit from a community center? I saw what value that the Punta Gorda Isle Civic Association brings. What about the rest of Punta Gorda? It was suggested the idea had merit, but it was premature. So here we are three years later at the decision point. Punta Gorda Isle Civic Association is a dynamic organization, 4,000 members, 40 clubs and groups. It's a magnet for new residents and for those considering purchasing homes. Unfortunately, it's for PGI residents only. What about the other 14,000 residents of Punta Gorda? Don't they deserve better? In more recent days, I've stood at that other podium seeking support from the council. I've spoken with the city manager. I took my idea public with letters to the editor and as guest columnist to the Charlotte Sun, all attempts to get traction. The recent survey conducted by, the, by Team Punta Gorda of the Boat Club and the Bayfront Center identified a critical need for relocation of these activities. This further furthered my cause. So today I approach the council with perhaps a last attempt suggesting that you can make a difference to the other 14,000 residents. I don't think anyone can deny that the residents would benefit from a community center for children, millennials, working residents, and seniors. From practical standpoint, the writing is on the wall for the boat club and the Bayfront Center. They need to find a new home as well. Yes, there's other competing interests for the old library, the Cultural Center, uh, I'm sorry, Cultural Heritage Center and the Punta Gorda Historical Society have clearly expressed interest. I do not challenge their value. They may be even uh, opportunities to share resources. There are clearly some questions to be asked. Yes, the county controls the assets, but the city has a good bargaining chip. The land for the new library was donated by the city. Certainly a unified voice from the city should be well received. The other obvious question is funding for operation and maintenance. I'm very conscious of the limited city budgets. The PGI Civic Association, Boat Club and Bayfront Center all operate without city funding through donations, membership fees and rentals. There's no reason why a similar arrangement cannot be established. No city funding should have to be required. I ask you to think out of the box and offer the community a benefit that may outlive all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, regular agenda items? Now would be the time. Good morning, Kelly Gaylord, 320 Palm Isles Court. Regarding the uh, agenda item on the future use of the current Punta Gorda Library facility, I'd like council to consider recommending the facility be used for the Charlotte County Historical Center Museum. A local museum in Punta Gorda dates back to 1969, when a youth museum was started here in Punta Gorda with the goal to extend classroom history lessons. It was adopted by the county in 1983. The name was changed to the Museum of Charlotte County in 1989 and reflect, re, to reflect the visitors of all ages, and later changed again to the Charlotte County Historical Center. A new building was purchased in, by the county on Bayshore Road in Charlotte Harbor in 2003 where it operated until 2014 when the building was torn down. The county promised to find a new home. A presentation was recently given to the National Governors Association in July, and the keynote speaker was a, humanitarian, a, a humanities professor sorry, from the University of Richmond who spoke about the importance of history education. He said that history has been uh, diminished in our schools over the past two decades. Students are no longer learning to think historically as part of fundamental education, as part of the way they see the world. The range of history we teach in space and time is narrowing. He also said teach, history teaches fundamental facts taught nowhere else, and that our history is the very definition of who we are and who we can become. 
He went on to say that people of all ages are becoming more interested in discovering history through ancestry research, visiting historical sites, and seeking out history museums. It's a growing national trend, and it's becoming big business. He said that of the nation's 35,000 museums, over half of them are devoted to history. These museums each year generate 50 billion, that's with a B, in revenue for the nation's GDP, helping to make history tourism one of the most important drivers of every state's economy. So hopefully you can see how important history is to our community's children and adults, as well as our economy. We already have a good base here in town, two museums, our history park, and our historic murals. But folks are looking for more. I often get asked what else is there to visit when I do mural tours. Using the current library building as our history museum would create a history campus being just a block away from the history park and the new library that will contain a hundred, a thousand, sorry, square foot history archive. With 9,200 square feet of space, the museum could also potentially share the facility with the proposed Charlotte Heritage Center. It often comes down to economics. In this case, the county would maintain the building and staff the museum as well. Last month, the county moved their historical center staff out of Punta Gorda to the Mid-County Library. I believe there's a good chance that if the county does find a building for the museum, it may not be in Punta Gorda, and we'd lose out on the visitors and the tourism dollars. I ask for your support to bring the county's historical center museum back to Punta Gorda. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you had that time perfect. <laughs> Anybody else for regular agenda? Please make your way. Anybody else? You can line up over here at this podium to start when she's finished. Anybody else want to speak? Go ahead. Uh, Sherry Lenora, resident of Punta Gorda. Uh, when I decided to move to Punta Gorda four years ago, my decision on where specifically to locate was heavily influenced by the tremendous value I saw in the um, Punta Gorda Civic Association. Uh, I never even really considered buying a home outside of the PGI area because the idea of having a built-in social schedule and over a thousand immediate new friends was so appealing to me. Moving so far from friends and family was scary and I felt I was maximizing my successful, my chances for a successful transition to a new home with such a fantastic safety net. As I became more familiar with my community, I wondered how all of the other equally deserving citizens, young and old, were left out of such a similarly enriching experience. I was honestly appalled at how underserved the majority of the citizens in Punta Gorda were. Every community I've ever lived in, some of them as small as 2,500, have had a community senior center that is available to all residents, that is, serves as a, a central gathering place. Given the city's current demographics, how could this community not have a senior community center? The first time I spoke before council, I advocated for such a facility. But as I became more involved in Punta Gorda, I heard over and over again about the dire financial uh, straits the city is facing. So as strongly as I felt about this need, I decided that it was not prudent at this time. The city needed to stop operating on reserves. So I am extremely surprised that the city would even consider taking on a new project such as a new museum or a cultural center. And understand I am the queen of museums and cultural centers everywhere. Museums and particularly those that celebrate cultures are my thing. I can happily spend an entire day at one. I post so many vi videos and photos from them on Facebook that even I get sick of them. Um, so I can't believe I'm saying this. But the city cannot believe, take on, entertain the notion of taking on a new project at this time. And if they were to take on a new project, something as, and as mobile as the idea of a cultural center or historic center might be, they must um, insist, I must insist that, that you look at the basic services you need to provide for all of your citizens. So sadly, a historic or cultural center should not be added to the city's pressing agenda and instead, you need to serve all of the community's um, needs. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we will move into the regular agenda now. And first, we have the items under budget. First, we have an unfunded mandate brought down by the state of Florida, which would be the award of the agreement for the actuary services to Foster & Foster from Fort Myers. We talked about this during the budget hearings. Um, 
So the bid came in, actually came in less than what we uh, envisioned. We're just here to award it so we can meet our Gatsby requirement. Gatsby, Governmental Accounting Standings Board mm -hmm. requirements. And if you look at those hourly rates, every kid should look into being an actuary for a profession. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite impressive. Any questions or comments on the award of the agreement? Motions? Motion I move to that we accept the, uh, the uh, <coughs> agreement to go on with Foster and Foster. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with Foster and Foster. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have award of the master agreement for the Bethel St. Mark infrastructure analysis. Strategic plan. Good morning, Marion Pace, procurement manager for the record. Uh, procurement solicited request for qualifications under uh, the Competitive Consultants Competitive Negotiations Act to hire an engineer to conduct an infrastructure analysis for the Bethel St. Mark um, District. Uh, we received three responses and the committee selected um, infrastructure um, solution services out of Sarasota as the most qualified um, firm. We negotiated a master agreement. Um, initially, we were hoping that everything, they could do everything under just a regular agreement, but the cost and the budget, it was prohibited. So we uh, made it, turned it into a master agreement so they can do phase one this year for this amount. And then we've already pre-negotiated uh, phase two for the next fiscal year for their uh, services to complete the project. Questions or comments? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the award. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next, we have award of engineering services to Johnson Engineering for the Jones Loop Forest Main. Good morning, Ann Heinen, procurement for the record. Um, this would be an award of uh, amendment number one to the master agreement. The master agreement was awarded on January 18th. 2017. This is for construction services for the Jones Loop Force Main project. And it is a not to exceed amendment. The invoicing will be actual work uh, documented and approved by the city project manager for payment. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you explain to me, please, what, uh, what role this organization plays um, in, in conjunction with the Gianetti contracting contract that will be next on the agenda? They will be overseeing uh, with construction services and close out services for the project. They'll review and um, recommend, make recommendations on the shop drawings submitted. They'll review change orders that are submitted and make recommendations on the change orders during the construction period. They'll also sign and seal the as built for the closed out and closed out permits for regulatory agencies. Okay, thank you. So they're basically like the project manager situation. Marion Pace, um, they will not be performing the CEI services, which are the ongoing daily operations. That'll be performed by the city project manager. Okay. They'll be performing these other services as the engineer of record. Okay. Does the does the contractor that's doing the project not uh, not have their own staff on board to do that? I'm I'm kind of confused why we have to have two separate contracts. I'm not sure you want the construction right. firm mm -hmm. to oversee their own so. work. Well, I understand that part of it, but so that's why they have. And plus, okay. Johnson Engineering was the firm that designed the project. Okay. They have to right. sign and seal the documents. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Motions to approve. I motion move. To second. We have a motion and a second to approve the award to Johnson Engineering. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Now we have the award to the Gianetti Contracting Corporation. Um, this is an award of the agreement to Gianetti Contracting Corporation of Pompano Beach, Florida. Procurement issued an inv invitation to bid for the construction of the Jones Loop Force Main Project. Uh, this is a lump sum cost project of 2,062,153.80, along with a contingency requested by the Department of uh, 100,000 for a total cost of 2,162,153.80. Uh, 
the, con the contingency is less than 5% of the contract, and this is to be used by the, the department for unforeseen <coughs> conditions uncovered during construction or change order requests by the city. Do we have any history with Gianetti? Have they done any city projects for us before? I don't believe they have, no. I'm not, no, I'm not aware of so. that. We did um, request references when we did the invitation to bid. The requirements were for a uh, legal business three years, and we also asked them to demonstrate the three years um, with like projects of scope and size, and we asked them to demonstrate with two particular that were force main projects as well, being the, the main contractor on the project. And they did fulfill those requirements. And we did get a good response from the other bidders. Yes, we did receive references and, and very positive responses. Any questions or motions? Uh, mo move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the award to Gianetti, Gianetti Contracting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Is somebody going to um, let TerraCap know that we have approved this and that something is going to be happening with some kind of expectation of timetable? Okay. I, I can call the CEO. Would you do that? Okay. That would be great. Because I know they're really looking forward to this getting done. You want to do the RO plant real quick? real quick? Okay, Howard's suggesting we move into the RO plant update since our utilities director is at the podium. Is that okay? Uh, I can sit down if you'd like. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Tom Jackson, for the record. I, I want to back up one quick second. It should be loaded to the right. Oh, there they are. Thank you. I just wanted to say on the Jones, Jones Loop Force Main procurement, uh, this is a very complicated project and uh, procurement did an outstanding job getting it bid very quickly. Uh, qualifying, we had four good applicants and mm -hmm. qualifying and picking what we believe is the best. Uh, I think it's gonna be a very good project and thank them for that. Uh, Councilman Wine some time back approached me and said, you know, one way to keep up with what's going on with the groundwater RO plant might be to do just a real quick PowerPoint every few months just to bring everybody up to speed as to the progress we're making on the project. Excellent idea. Uh, we, as you'll recall, kicked the project off in June, mid-June is, is when Wharton Smith, uh, we gave them notice to proceed on the project. And what I'm going to do today is give you about a five or six slide quick presentation of what we've done since June and give us a 30-day a, a or a quarter, quarterly look ahead at what we're anticipating doing in the next three months out there. Okay, very good. All right, the work that we've completed so far, and I used the, the term grubbing and clearing the site for the utility advisory board, and they had no idea what I was talking about, <laughs> grubbing the site. Uh, we've actually cleared the site, moved the vegetation and the roots out of the way so that we can, we can proceed doing the work at the site itself. We've done the initial stormwater comp pond, which is compliant with the FDEP dewatering permit. We had to get a DEP permit for the stormwater pond and to dewater the site so that we could do construction activities that had to go into the stormwater pond. Uh, we did con uh, temporary construction of the administration offices and parking area, stone columns for the support of the blending basin and the two million gallon storage tank. Uh, Wharton Smith had a contractor with a piece of equipment that actually vibrated stone into the ground to make stone columns to support the foundation for the blending basin, which is a very large structure and a two million gallon tank to support that. I've worked on projects in the old, old days and I'm sure uh, Councilman Wine has where they actually screw auger and pour concrete as they back the auger down. This is a newer technology that actually is, has worked very well in supporting tanks. Uh, dewater excavating the blend and base, blending basin site itself, and then the first lift of fill under the buildings and the tank foundations. We actually took the soil out and then put layers and lifts to a certain elevation of fill and compacted it to a certain compaction. And I'll very quickly run through the slides that show this activity. 
As you'll recall, on the left is the existing Shell Creek water treatment plant facility. The right, the, the big uh, soccer field, multiple soccer field looking green grass area is where we're talking about the construction taking place. As you can see, they started, that's the area where the blending basin is going to go. They started removing dirt and compacting and filling that, placing it back into in, in service there. Is that the work trailer back there? The work it is actually up in the front. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. up, up, up to the, that is north, and you can see Shell Creek on the horizon between the two, the two tree lines is Shell Creek. And right there, yes, to the north. Thank you. And that's Washington Loop Road that you see running along there, I believe, Yes, right? it is. Yes, okay. ma'am. That's the area of the blending basin. Then you can see that we've completely stripped the site of vegetation and work continues on the areas where uh, the buildings are going to go. We're, we're compacting and filling in the foundation for the building areas. And that's actually over in this area you'll see is a stormwater pond, a giant stormwater pond, and we'll see that as we move forward in the presentation. This shot is kind of uh, long further away just to give you a, a feel for the size of the site itself and the size of the project itself. The existing shell Creek treatment plant you can see is on the left and it's like almost the identical footprint of that existing structure. And then a little closer in, just more earthwork taking place. We're stripping down, compacting, and filling back up again. Here you can get a good picture of the completed stormwater pond, which is right there. And that captures all the runoff in the stormwater and the water we pumped off the site. The blending basin and, and two million gallon storage tank are in this area here. You can see that's actual excavation, the beginning excavation of the blending basin itself. And what the blending basin is a giant tank or basin where we will bring treated Shell Creek water in and treated groundwater, RO treated groundwater, and blend those two together to a stable uh, state and a, the pH, desired pH and chlorine residual we want prior to sending it to the high service pumps for distribution. And there's it's formed up getting ready to do the, the foundation uh, lift, and that's 11 feet or 14 feet below grade, just to give you an idea of the size of that blending basin. The tank itself is 11 feet below grade, and we're filling three feet in of support. For this next quarter, we tend, intend to form and pour the blending basin. In fact, we actually are putting steel in it this week. They will pour at the end of this week or the first port of next week. Uh, the weather has not cooperated. We're constantly fighting water out there and pumping water out and keeping it dry, but we hope to pour to pour this week or the beginning of next week. We hope to dewater and excavate for the building trenches and the pump cans for the RO building. The pumps that actually will pump the water out of the lower treatment chambers have to be installed in their big round cans that the pumps drop down into. So it's again, more underground work that has to be uh, done in conjunction with the building itself form and pour the trenches for the RO building. The trenches are for the foundation, the footing for the foundation, and then start on the yard piping. The piping from the pumps in the back of the site, as we looked at that site looking north, the actual production well field pumps are back to the south, and we start laying out that piping as well as the piping from the plant itself that will interconnect with the Shell Creek plant. And that's what our, we're anticipating for the next quarter. We are on schedule, uh, even with all the rainfall we've had, and I know we had to do a restart on the blending basin because our dewatering pump couldn't keep up with the rainfall a couple of weeks ago, and even with that, we're still uh, a little bit ahead of schedule. Any questions on that? So does the basin stay open like a reservoir, or is it an actual tank? Is it gonna be installed there? It's gonna be an open basin okay. prior to disinfection, yes. Yes, and then it's, not, it's not a closed tank. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. First of all, I want to thank you. This is, another, as I've said, this is another example of staff being able to run projects very efficiently and very well. Thank this you. This is by far the largest project the city's undertaking, and it will be a, gr a grand uh, feather in our cap as a community and a, and a utilities department. Uh, just for a matter of perspective, you mentioned the two gallon, two million gallon storage tank. Just for the uh, general public, that's about 17 million gallons of water plus the way the tank, which those columns he's talking about is supporting. So just to give you a perspective yeah. of the type of construction we're talking about, this is 
real heavy stuff. Water weighs 8.34 pounds per gallon. You multiply it out, it comes out just under 17 million gallons, and then the tank is going to have a certain significant mass on itself. And uh, so this is real high-tech stuff that they're doing. The Bell Harbor ground storage tank, those are familiar with our facility on Bell Harbor, that's a 2 million gallon tank, to give you an idea of size. Yes. Yeah, it's a great project. We've that's got not holding potable water. Sir? That tank's not holding potable water, is it? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a repump. Okay. Um, we have a great contractor with Wharton Smith. Uh, Steve Leonard is our project city project manager on this, and he's 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 a bulldog. They don't he counts the nuts and bolts and the threads on the bolts, and uh, it's going to be a great project. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the updates weekly in the newsletter. Do we yes, want to and and I and I've, I I do a picture every week too to show the next week the, the week progress so you can kind of follow along. Well, there's a way. lot of interest on the RO because I know when you don't report it, I get questions. Doing? Hey, we <laughs> haven't heard anything lately. Yeah. What's going on? Right, cancel the project. So. Yeah, no. I keep getting the question: wh When is it opening? Uh, <laughs> and that's a great that's a great question. We we gave Wharton Smith the notice to proceed uh, about June 14th, and we expect um, 24 months. So June 14th, 2020, okay, good. is is our target date. Great, thank you. Thank you. We are going to take a short break here shortly, but we're going to get one quick item out of the way, which is under new business. Request to utilize the public parking spaces on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard for construction activities related to the Charlotte County Justice Center renovation. The uh, contractor and the county has, oh, oh yours. Okay. Um, we reviewed this and um, the uh, representative from Charlotte County here, but um, they want to. Uh, take up some public parking on Martin Luther King Boulevard, about six spaces. We are okay with that because there are spaces on the other side of the uh, former housing authority property that you can also park. There's cement area there. Mm -hmm. Would you like to continue? Uh, sure, I'm Dawn Balsamo, Ajax Building Corporation. We're gonna be doing the renovation on the Justice Center. It'll be a two year project. And we have leased that property um, on the corner of MLK and East Marion Avenue to use as our staging and laydown yard and parking for the construction employees during that time. Uh, there are six parking spaces on MLK directly behind the um, Justice Center that we would like to use as entrance to that property that we've rented. They do have pavers and it is public parking. We will protect it and restore it to the condition it's currently in when we are finished. And you can see the parking that's available um, right there for public parking uh, in the meantime. Is that free parking? <laughs> <laughs> I've already been asked by several people. They thought the, the uh, HUD property, the former HUD property was being developed, but it's not. It's being used for the construction of the, at the Justice Center. Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, developer and the person who currently owns the land intends to use it for long term. We just leased that property from them as our lay down yard during construction of the Justice Center. Right. Yes. Um, is it possible to have some signage on Milas that, if it's not already there, that indicates the Harbor Walk parking so that we could? Um... I don't know if that's private or not. Is that private? Mikhail Finkel. Um, I talked to the city engineer, and though that the parking over there is not striped parking because it doesn't meet the requirements to be parking. There, it, for the nodes in, they're two foot short. So the, mm. the oh, area is there, but it's not. Yeah, it, it's striped. there. It's not official parking per strict guidelines. I've parked there many times. Can we just have a sign that says Harbor Walk? So that just <clears throat> without indicating parking, I mean, I'm on your side actually. Just trying to help people um, who may frequent it. I mean, we can put up. I guess we can put up a sign that says Arbor Walk, a, a makeshift sign. This is what was provided in our agenda material, just mm -hmm. for public education here. 
So do we have um, any other questions or motions? I, I move that we move forward. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the utilization of the public parking spaces for the construction of the Justice Center. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Okay, we are going to take a short break. It's 10.30. We will come back at 10.40.